Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. We're going to continue part five with Sally's study on the great earthquake of Revelation. Turn your King James Bibles to the book of 2 Kings chapter 2. We're going to take a look at Elijah. Now, I did an hour and 40 minute study on Elijah the prophet. If you're interested, send me a link. Uh, he is going to be one of the two witnesses, according to one of the minor prophets. Uh, I know that uh, Jesus said that uh, Elijah, John the Baptist was Elijah, but he was talking about the spirit of Elijah. Uh, the Pharisees had asked, and the Sadducees, I think, had asked John, uh, "Art thou, you know, art thou Elijah then?" And he said, "No." Now I believe that John the Baptist knew who he was. Okay. Now Elijah was taken up into heaven. John the Baptist was born. So. Unless you believe in reincarnation, which I don't, uh, it's kind of hard to think John the Baptist was Elijah, but there's people that teach this stuff. So, without further ado, let's read 2 Kings chapter 2. And I did, an, like I said, an entire study on the life of Elijah. He's a very, he, I, matter of fact, uh, in Bible college, I had to do a Bible study on a uh, a character, a Bible character, and I picked Elijah. I thought he had that interesting of a life. All right, verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And uh, what's interesting is E-L, when you see E-L, it has reference to God. And Yah is uh, like a part of a name of God. So <laughs> his name is, you know, Elijah uh, has reference, both parts of his name has reference to God. So, and so does Elisha. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Beth El. Beth means house, and El has reference to God. So basically, Beth El means house of God. For the Lord has sent me to Beth El, and Elisha, El, Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as my soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Beth El. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou not that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. Basically, the Bob translation is, Oh yeah, I know. Be quiet. And Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold, your, hold ye your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. And fifty men of the sons of the prophet went and stood to view afar off, and they, and they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters, and they were divided hither and, hither and thither, so that they too went over on dry ground. Isn't that what Moses uh, did by the power of the Lord in the Red Sea? Uh, when they came out of Egypt? Oh, yeah. Verse 9, And it came to pass when 
they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha. Now listen, listen to this. Ask what I shall do for, to, for thee before I be taken away from thee. In other words, you know, I, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Ask me, ask me a favor. Ask me, what do you want? I'm going to do something for you. That's the Bob translation. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion, a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Ooh, Elijah, you're a great prophet, but I want double what you got. I want twice the power that you got. I mean, <laughs> wow. And he said, Elijah, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. So, what does it say in the book of Hebrews 4.16 about, you know, asking for things, right? It says, let us therefore come boldly. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Well, that's what Elisha did. He says, I want, a, I want double what you got. So, if he sees Elijah taken away, his request is granted, and if he doesn't see him, the answer is no. Verse 11, And it came to pass, as they went, still went on and talked, that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire, and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. See, there's only two people that never, this is my note, there's only two people that never died in scripture, and that's Enoch, he was taken into heaven, and Elijah. Um, that's kind of why I, of the opinion that Enoch's going to be the second witness. But some people say Moses because of the transfiguration of Jesus when Elijah and Moses appeared. But what can I tell you? Verse 12. And Elisha saw it. All right, so remember the deal was he wanted the double portion. He wanted that double portion of power. And Elijah said, yep, if you see me going, you're, the answer is yes. Verse 12. And Elisha saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood on the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters, and he said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had smitten the waters, they parted thither, hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophet, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master, lest peradventure the spirit of the Lord hath taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, ye shall not send. And when they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, send. They sent therefore fifty men, and they sought three days, but found him not. And when they came again to him, for he tarried at Jericho, he said unto them, Did I not say unto you, Go not? And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth, but the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. 
So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. And he went up from thence unto Bethel, and as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city, and mocked him, and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he took, looked back and looked on them. Now, I think these were Canaanite kids mocking not just the prophet of the Lord, but mocking the power of the Lord. Verse 24. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel. And from thence he returned to Samaria. All right. Uh, I put a lot of my commentary in that. but Sally writes, There's much reason to believe that the rapture of the church takes place at the seventh trumpet, right after the two witnesses are raptured and the great earthquakes begin, begins. On the seventh trump, Christ takes his bride, stones the earth, breaks it in half, and then destroys it by fire. Some of these things may even happen simultaneously. It may all take place in one day or even one hour. All right, let's go to Revelation chapter 18. And after these things, verse 1, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Now why would they say that? Well, Babylon, the physical Babylon, the city, was destroyed and in Isaiah, it was prophesied that it would never be rebuilt. Matter of fact, uh, I think it was Saddam Hussein tried to rebuild it. And we all know what happened to him, right? But why does it say, is fallen, is fallen? Well, my opinion is, the first time it fell, it was physical. The second time it falls, it was spiritual. So Babylon the Great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Think about coronavirus and Ebola, right? And that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. You see, the bride of Christ, the king, is the church. But this one makes herself a queen, thinking that she is the bride of the king. I don't think so. Verse 8, Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. That's why Sally said this. But then again, uh, Peter records that a day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. So I don't know. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. 
and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thigh and wood and all manner of vessels of ivory and all manner of vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves." and souls of men. Souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so great riches is come to naught. What does naught mean? Nothing. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their hair at heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein we were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour is she made desolate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven. How do you like that? Uh, this, this evil mystery Babylon's destroyed, and God's angel here is saying, Rejoice over her. Thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. Huh. Now, think about this, people. People will tell you that this is New York City. They'll tell you it's Rome. But uh, Verse 20 says, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. What city made problems for the apostles and the prophets? I'm going to give you a, a little hint. It's in the Middle East. It's not Rome. Verse 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Very important. You want to know what the sorceries were? Look up Kabbalah. Uh, it's spelled sometimes with a Q, sometimes spelled with a C, but the modern spelling is with a K. K-A-B-A-L-A-H. I think it's K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H. Some spellings say Kabbalah, and there's even Allah <laughs> in the name sometimes. That's the sorceries. Now listen to this. And in her, Mystery Babylon, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Let's interpret this. 
All right, in Matthew 23, we read, Matthew 23, 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. All right, Bob's note here. In Matthew 23, verse 33, Jesus says, Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? Now, I ask you a question here. Who is Jesus talking to here? Is he talking to the Roman soldiers? No. Is he talking to the Japanese, China, uh, Mexico? No. Verse 34. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues. Ah, so that's who he's talking to. And some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barcheus, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. All right, so, bingo. That tells you who, uh, in Revelation 18.24, when it's talking about well, 23, it says, For by thy sorceries were all the nations deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Sounds to me like they're tracing things back to Cain. What do you think? Cain and Abel, right? All right, so... Uh, she writes that the passage refers to the very end when God avenges the martyrs right after the last martyr who will be murdered is killed or dead. 